children. Hope all of you are keeping fun. Today, we are going to study Chapter 1 Nutrition Plans, Part 2. In the last class, you have studied about the autotrophic nutrition. Okay, I think all of you know what are autotrophs. All green plants are autotrophs because they can make their own food from simple substances like carbon dioxide and water. Today, we will learn about the other mode of nutrition that is heterotrophic nutrition. What is meant by heterotrophic nutrition? Heteros means others and trophos means nourishment. They depend on others for their nourishment. All green plants are autotrophs, but there are some plants which cannot make their own food by themselves because of the absence of chlorophyll. These plants are called heterotrophic plants. We know all animals including human beings are heterotrophs because we depend on plants for our food. And there are few plants which are also heterotrophic in their nutrition. Today we will study about heterotrophic plants and the different types of heterotrophic nutrition. So I'll show you in this slide what are the different types of heterotrophic nutrition. So we can see there are three types of heterotrophic nutrition, parasitic, saprophytic and symbiotic. So first we can take parasitic mode of nutrition. All of you have heard of parasites. So when we take our own body, we can see that there are a number of parasites living in our body. So actually these parasites are small animals or plants that live on or inside the body of other organisms. For example, we can take the lice that lives in our head is a parasite. Take that bed bugs, mosquitoes, leeches, the worms like round worms, tapeworms that lives in our intestine. All these are different types of parasites that live in our body. So these parasites do harm to our body. They suck our blood and take the nutrients from our blood. So they are actually harming our body. So that is the parasites do harm to the host or the body in which they lives. Okay, so there are some plants which are parasitic in their nutrition. So you can see one plant, yellow tubular structure twining upon a tree. So twining upon the stem and branches of the tree. This yellow tubular structure is a plant called the cascuta. This cascuta is a parasitic plant because this cascuta has no chlorophyll and cannot do photosynthesis. So they try upon other trees and derive the nutrition from that tree. Okay, so the plants on which it is climbing is called the host and the plant which climbs on the tree is called the parasite. This cascuta is a parasite. Plant which derives nutritional requirements from other plants. It deprives the host of valuable nutrients. So this parasitic plant do harm to the host. It deprives the host of valuable nutrition. Here we can see another plant. Have you heard of carnivorous plants? You are familiar with carnivorous animals like lion, tiger, leopards. These are carnivorous animals. So what are carnivorous animals? They eat other animals or they eat the flesh of other animals. Like this, there are some plants which are carnivorous. Picture of a pitcher plant. So what is the spelling pitcher plant? P-I-T-C-H-E-R. You have to say pitcher. Pitcher plant. This plant has a pitcher-like structure. The leaves are modified in a pitcher-like structure and the apex of the leaf forms the lid. They can close and open the lid. When an insect lands on the picture, the lid closes and the insect gets entangled into the picture. 
there are hair like structure inside the picture and when an insect get entangled into the hair they produce some digestive juices which can digest the insect so actually this picture plant are autotrophic they have green color and they can do photosynthesis then how they become insectivorous plants because they are living in their soil which are deprived of nitrogen so in order to meet their nutrition requirements they become insectivorous there are some species of pisha plant can eat even the sands so actually this um, pisha plant is a partial heterotroph as they can do photosynthesis so they are autotrophs also next we can pass on to the next type of nutrition that is saprophytic mode of nutrition have you seen mushrooms solid packets in vegetable markets also we can see this mushrooms on rotting wood especially in the rainy season so the umbrella like fluffy patches on the rotting wood so what is the color of this mushroom of course it is white because it has no chlorophyll it is a non green plant then as they cannot do photosynthesis how will they get their nutrients so they derive their nutrients from this rotting wood in a solution form they can secrete the digestive juices and absorb the nutrients in a solution form are you familiar with bread mold so we can do an activity for making a bread mold take a piece of bread moisten it with water and leave it in a humid warm condition for 2 to 3 days we can see fluffy patches growing on the bread if you look it under a microscope or see it under a hand lens you can see cotton like threads spreading on the bread they are white green or brown in color so how they they derive their nutrition from this bread in a solution form this type of organisms which derive their nutrition from the dead and decaying matter in a solution form are called the saprotrophs the mode of nutrition in which organisms take in nutrients in solution form from dead and decaying matter this is the saprotrophic nutrition or saprophytic nutrition this is also a type of heterotrophic nutrition in plants this fungi also grow on some articles like clothes leather pickles etc and they destroy these articles how does the fungus grow these fungal spores are present in there when they come in contact with humid warm things they germinate and grow and this day the growth of this fungi will destroy the things there are some useful fungi also like this mushrooms and uh, yeast and there are some fungi which cause diseases in plants and animals especially in plants now we can pass on to the third type of nutrition that is symbiotic in this symbiotic uh, nutrition there is a symbiotic relationship between two organisms in this symbiotic relationship two organisms live together and both are mutually benefited in some trees there are some fungi live in the roots of some trees these fungi we know they are non green plants and this fungi get food from this uh, the roots of these trees and in turn they help the trees to absorb water and minerals another example is lichens so lichens are the association of algae and fungi as you know algae are green plants isn't it they can do photosynthesis is they have chlorophyll but this fungi in turn they are non green plants so they live together so this algae provides food to the fungi and in return the fungi helps the algae to absorb water and minerals to the algae this they are 
mutually benefited. Now we can recollect what are the different types of heterotrophic nutrition parasitic, saprophytic, and symbiotic. Explain parasitic nutrition with the help of an example. You can take the example of this cascuta and you can describe what is parasitic nutrition. Then the third question what are saprotrophs? Give a examples. Saprotrophs are um, organisms which derive their nutrition from uh, decaying matter in a solution form. For example, you can say mushroom or bread malt. Then fourth one, what is the type of nutrition in lichens? That is symbiotic type of heterotrophic nutrition. Now we can move on to the next topic that is how nutrients are replenished in the soil. We know that plants grow in the soil and absorb nutrients from the soil. So as they are absorbing these nutrients continuously what happens? The soil become depleted of these nutrients. Have you seen farmers add fertilizers or manures to the um, fields? Or gardeners adding these manures and fertilizers in lawns or pots? So do you think why it is? Because this Fertilizers and manures contain the nutrients which are required for the plants like nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, etc. So we are adding this fertilizers and manures in order to enrich the soil. Okay? So we have to add this from time to time in order for the proper growth of the plants. We know crops need a lot of nitrogen. In order to make protein, we, need, we know proteins are needed for the growth of plants and nitrogen is a part of protein. Then how do they get this nitrogen? Nitrogen is present abundantly in the air but plants cannot take this nitrogen directly as they take carbon dioxide. So this nitrogen has to convert into a soluble form. A type of bacteria called rhizobium bacteria present in the root nodules of some plants like pea, gram, moong, beans and other legumes. So this rhizobium bacteria is present in the root nodules of leguminous plants like peas, beans, moong, etc. And they can absorb this nitrogen and convert the nitrogen into a soluble form. This rhizobium bacteria, they cannot prepare their own food. So, this rhizobium bacteria and these leguminous plants live in a symbiotic relationship. And they get mutually benefited. This rhizobium bacteria get food and uh, shelter from the root nodules of leguminous plants and in turn these plants get nitrogen we know that pulses are the source of protein because these leguminous plants can convert the atmospheric nitrogen into soluble form and absorb this nitrogen with the help of this rhizobium bacteria so this very good to plant this leguminous plants between crops. So this very this relationship is very beneficial to farmers because they can minimize the use of fertilizers. We know these fertilizers are very expensive. So it is very good to grow these leguminous plants between crops. So we have come to the end of the chapter. Before winding up, we can summarize the main points. So there is one question. Planting leguminous plants after harvest is beneficial to farmers because these leguminous plants add nitrogen to the soil and so the farmers can reduce the use of fertilizers. We can sum up the main points. There are two modes of nutrition in plants, autotrophic and heterotrophic. Green plants are autotrophic. Green plants make their food by photosynthesis. There are few plants which do not have chlorophyll, so they depend on other plants. They are heterotrophic in nutrition. 
Different types of heterotrophic nutrition are parasitic, saprotrophic and symbiotic. So you have to write all these questions in your notebook and you have to write the answers by yourself. And also I have given you some model questions answering a word. You have to write one word answers like name the following, fill in the blanks. So many one word questions are there. So I have given you some model, a parasitic plant, you know, that is um, cascuta, it's a parasitic plant, an insectivorous plant, pitcher plant, a saprophyte, mushroom, the bacteria that live in the root nodules of legumes, that is rhizobium bacteria. So all these questions you have to write down in the notebook and write the answers. Then write short answers. Photosynthesis is a unique process on the earth, justified. I have already explained that. Then pitcher plant is a partial heterotroph. Why? Because they are plants and they can do photosynthesis and also they are insectivorous plants because they are living in a soil which are deprived of this nitrogen. So we can say that this is a partial heterotroph. The long answers and the model describe the process of photosynthesis with the help of a diagram. So you, can, you have to describe the process of photosynthesis, you already know that. And also you have to draw the diagram, that is schematic diagram, showing the process of photosynthesis. So by this, we have come to the end of the chapter. All of you watch the video three or four times and also write down all the question answers in your notebook and study well. Thank you. Have a nice day.